focusing on dealing the highest damage possible with the lowest investment possible. This is what the build looks like. Disclaimer, this build is mainly for you players or those who want to make a second team without much investment. All players won't likely to benefit from this, however, feel free to stick around. Let the show begin. Consisting of Barbara, Kukishinobu, Kolei, and Xiangling, this team mainly deals damage through Overload, Burgeon, and Hyper Bloom reactions, which makes stats like Crit Rate and Crit Damage redundant because these reactions cannot crit. Most of these characters can be obtained for free from in-game activity. Barbara from reaching AR-18 and completing a long shot quest, Kolei from clearing Abyss Floor 4, Chamber 3, Xiangling from reaching AR-20 and clearing Abyss Floor 3, Chamber 3, and lastly Kukishinobu from the Gacha Wish system. If you don't have Kukishinobu, you could replace her with Lee which you'll get from clearing Spark Amongst the Pages quests. However, I do recommend using Kukishinobu over Lisa, mainly for convenience reason. All these characters are equipped with craftable weapons only, and for the artifacts, you could only focus on the main stats. However, if you want to invest into the substats as well, I will give you the recommendations. Barbara will use 4 pieces of Ocean Hue Clam artifact with HP% percent main stats on the Sands, Goblet, and Circlet. For the substats, you'll want to focus on Flat HP, HP% percent, and Energy Recharge. Equip her with the prototype Ember Catalyst to stack on more HP because in the case of Barbara and Ocean Hute Clam, the more HP she has, the more she heals, and the more she heals, the more she'll deal damage. Kishinobu can use either 4 piece of Gilded Dreams or 4 piece Flower of Paradise Lost with Elemental Mastery as the main stats on the Sands, Goblet, and Circlet. For the substats, go for EM only on the Flower and Feather, followed up by Flat HP, HP% percent, and Energy Recharge. For the weapon, she will use the Iron Sting to boost her Elemental Mastery even more because in the case of Hyper Bloom, Burgeon, and Overload reactions. The higher the level and elemental mastery of the character goes, the higher the reaction's damage will also go. Kolei will use 4 pieces of deep wood memories with attack percent on the sands, gender damage bonus on the goblet, and crit rate or crit damage on the circlet. For the substats, go for crit rate, crit damage, energy recharge, and attack percent. This artifact will help reduce enemy's dendro resistance, allowing you to deal more dendro damage. For the weapon, she could either use Favonius Warbow or King Squire depending on what you need. If you need more energy recharge, go for Favonius Warbow. If you need more attack, go for the King Squire. Both are viable, but personally, I chose to use the King Squire simply because it looks better on her. Xiangling, just like Kukishinobu, can use either 4-piece Gilded Dreams or 4-piece Flower of Paradise Lost. Elemental Mastery will be the main stats on the Sands, Goblet, and Circlet. For the substats, go for EM on the Flower and Feather, followed up by Attack Percent, Energy Recharge, Crit Rate, and Crit Damage. For the weapon, use either Kitten Crosspier or Moon Piercer. Both will give the same amount of Elemental Mastery, and the weapon effect is negligible. So how do you play with this team? It's actually quite simple. Use Barbara Elemental Skill to apply Hydro, and Kukishinobu Skill to trigger Electro Charge and the 4 piece of Gilded Dream effect. Use Kolei Skill to apply Dendro, then after this, depending on the situation, if there's multiple target, use Xiangling Skill for Burgeon and Overload, then switch back to Barbara. If there's only a single enemy, switch back to Barbara after Kolei Skill. Here is the demonstration for single target. Let the show begin! And this is the demonstration for multiple target. Let the show begin. Bond is strong. This is my character constellations at the time of making this video. So yeah, this build is really good especially for beginners. I personally use this build and it is viable to even clear Abyss 11 Chamber 3 with full stars. It is not recommended however for Abyss 12 as the damage is not fast enough, but it should be enough to obliterate everything else in the game. If you have any questions, just ask in the comments below. So yeah, thanks for watching, bye.